Chebyshev's theorem states that for any set of numbers, the fraction that will lie within k standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus the quantity 1 over k squared. The first part of this question says using this result find the fraction of all the numbers of a data set that must lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So in the statement of Chebyshev's theorem, k is the number of standard deviations for the mean. So if we want it to be within three standard deviations of the mean, they're telling us that k is equal to 3. So now we have the quantity we need to calculate this 1 minus the quantity 1 over k squared expression, which represents the fraction that they're asking about. That means all we need to do now is calculate 1 minus 1 over the quantity k squared. And if k is 3, we get 1 over uh, 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 minus 1 ninth, which is 8 ninths. So the fraction of all the numbers of a data set that must lie within three standard deviations of the mean is 8 ninths. While I've got it here, I do want to say one other thing. When they say find the fraction of, they're asking for something like that. But they, this problem could be stated a slightly differently. For instance, they could also, also ask what is the probability that um, this happens. And that probability, 8 ninths, if they ask it that way, you'd probably want to write it as a decimal. So um, just to show you that the answer wouldn't always have to be written this way. If they said the fraction of, that's obviously what they want. But you could also take 8 divided by 9, and let's just say we're going to round it to the um, thousandths place. That would be 0.889. So that's another way they might ask it. They might ask it with the word probability. What's the probability of one of those numbers lying within three standard deviations of the mean? If they ask it like that, they're probably going to want the answer as a decimal. And not that they're going to ask it that way, but they could. They could even ask you to write it as a percent. In other words, about 88.9% of the data is going to lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So the problem, as stated here, asks for the fraction of. So this is the answer they wanted. But if they ask the probability of, of, uh, of a number being within three standard deviations of the mean, then uh, it might very well be this that they're looking for. Just a word of warning. Let's solve another problem related to this. The B part says, find the fraction of all the numbers of a data set with a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 4 that, lie, that must lie between 52 and 68. Now this one requires a little bit more work, so let's take a little bit of time with this. First of all, I'm sort of going to sketch a little diagram, a picture of this. It helps me see what's going on. So what I would first say about this problem is we know the mean is 60. And we're looking for the numbers between 52 and 68. So let's say 52 is here. And 68 is over here. And you can see that 60 is in the middle. In fact, if you take 60 minus 52, the distance from here to here is 8. And the distance from here to here is 8. Now, the value k represents how many standard deviations you are from the mean. And since we know here that the standard deviation is 4, I would like to break this 8 up into into standard deviation units. So if the standard deviation is 4, this distance of 8 represents two standard deviations. If you move over by 4 and 4 again, you've gone two standard deviations if the standard deviation is 4. And the same thing here. To the right, if you move over one standard deviation and another standard deviation, you've gotten to the other endpoint. So 52 is two standard deviations from the mean 60, and 68 is also two standard deviations from the mean 60. So by drawing that picture, I've figured out that k must be 2, because each one of those is a standard deviation. Once I've figured that out, I'm really back to what I was doing before, 
which is figuring out what the quantity 1 minus k squared is. 1 minus k squared, that would be 1 minus 1 over, and if I just figured out that k is 2, I get 1 over 2 squared, and that's 1 minus 1 fourth, and 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So the fraction of the data that should be between two standard deviations of the mean between those two numbers is, is 3 fourths. And again, they could ask for that as a percentage, and you could write it as a decimal, maybe 0.75, and that would be 75%. I'm not going to do that here because that's not what they asked for. But just keep in mind that if they use the word probability or something like that, you're probably going to be asked to leave your answer as a decimal, you know, something like that. I'm not going to do that every time, but just keep that in mind. One more problem. So last but not least, part C. Part C says, find the fraction of all the numbers of a data set with a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 4 that are less than 52 and greater than 68. Now this problem, after you've already solved B, if you understand what you've done, uh, is very easy. So as Chebyshev's theorem is stated, it gives you the fraction of things that lie between two numbers, but this says I want it to be less than 52 and greater than six and greater than 68. Actually, that should be or. Find the fraction of all numbers of a data set with a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 4 that are less than 52 or greater than 68. Obviously, you can't be less than 62 and greater than 68. So that's a typo. And the way I would think about it is this. In the previous problem, I did all the hard work. I had 60, and I had um, 52 over here, and I had 68 over here, and I broke that 8 into 4 and 4, and I broke, broke that 8 into 4 and 4. I did all the hard work. So the fraction of data that lies between those two numbers from part B was three-fourths. In other words, what they're telling us is that three-fourths of the data points would lie inside between those two numbers. But they're asking for outside. Less than 52 is over here, and greater than, uh, and, or greater than 68 is over here. So in this problem, they're not asking the fraction that's between 52 and 68. They're asking for the fraction that's outside of that interval, less than the lower number and greater than the bigger number. Well, if you think about it a minute, the probability of the whole number line has got to add up to 1. So if you've got 3 fourths of the probability between, the rest of it must be on the tails. So the answer, if you know what you're doing, is simply going to be um, 1 minus your answer in part B. So that's 1 minus 3 fourths. If 3 fourths the probability is between the two, that means 1 minus 3 fourths. 1 fourth is either less than 52 or greater than 68. So whenever they ask for a between, you're going to apply the theorem directly. When they're asking less than or greater than, in other words, the area is outside of the interval, you're just going to get your answer as if you're answering between and say 1 minus, and that'll give you the fraction. So about a quarter, you expect one, 1 out of 4 of the data points to be either smaller than 52 or bigger than 68, and the other 3 quarters of them are actually in that interval. So think about that a little bit. It's just a subtle point, but it's important. Once you get the answer for B, you should immediately be able to say the answer for C if you understand what's going on.